Hey everyone, Mano back here, and today we're taking care of Presage in the Season of the Lost. I'm continuing my trend of getting these dungeons done solo for any players who have not done it yet. That includes Harbinger, Presage, Shattered Throne, Pit of Heresy, and I've already covered Prophecy in some of my previous videos. As always, my guides will feature using setups and builds that will require no raid weapons and very attainable gear. I try to make my guides for anyone who's wanting to give this a shot solo, and there's also an emblem that accompanies doing this solo as well. If you folks did not catch the newest Destiny Content Vault update, they released everything that is going to be vaulted to make room for the Witch Queen. And this isn't really a surprise to me, but I know many people are still talking about it on Twitter and things like that. I did know that all of the year four seasonal content was going to go, and I was pretty sure that Presage and Harbinger were going to go as well. So that is the reason why I am making this video. So if you have not soloed the Presage or the Harbinger guide, that guide will be coming out a little bit later, you can do this before the Witch Queen comes out. In addition, the Forsaken campaign and the Tangled Shore destination are going to enter the DCV but the Dreaming City, the Shattered Throne, and the Last Wish Raid are going to continue to be available. Okay, enough prelude stuff. Let's talk about what you need. An SMG in the Kinetic Slot. The Truth Teller Grenade Launcher is really nice for this, but you don't need it. Blinding Grenades is really solid. It's easily available. You can get it as a World Drop, or you can get it from the Gunsmith or Zer. The Lament Exotic Sword is one of the things that you need for this. It's easily gotten if you just go through the Beyond Light campaign. I'm using the Mask of the Quiet One, but you could use Dune Marchers, Syntheseps, or anything else like that. There's a reason I'm using the Lament, and that's because Passive Guard exists as well as Sword Scavenger on the Wayfinder's Compass, which will allow you to take less damage when holding a sword, as well as being able to pick up lots of sword ammo. Now, I would recommend that you get Lucent Blade, which will allow you to increase the damage you do with the sword, especially when you're charged with light. So put an Arc Mod on whatever piece has Lucent Blade. If you don't have this mod, go to the Gunsmith and check it out, or Ada One. In addition, I'm going to be using Solar Resistance, which is going to be really nice, especially for the final boss room. Sword Reserves, of course, and then Shield Break Charge is going to be nice as well, as that will make me charged with light. In addition, over on the Leg Armor, if you want to talk about the specific mods, you want to get Enhanced Sword Scavenger is great, because you can, again, get more ammo. Charged Up will allow you to stack the charges of light and recuperation is great because it replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of power that's going to work really really solidly because it will give you multiple charges of light we'll make sure you don't lose it and of course there's that passive guard mod i was talking about if you want to you can also put on high energy fire in place of lucent blade but lucent blade works just a little bit better with this build if you've got that in addition, I also run stacks on stacks on my leg armor. It allows you to gain an extra stack of charge with light for every stack that you gain, which is really nice because you're going to pick up lots of orbs. You're going to break lots of shields, lots of easy ways to get charged with light in this. Now, like I said, there's lots of exotics you can use. You can use one eyed mask, which will give you an overshield if you destroy a target that's highlighted. Mask of the Quiet One, which will give you more ability energy when you're damaged and when critically wounded, you regain maximum health on kills. You can use Dune Marchers. You can use Syntheseps. I've done this with lots of different builds on my Titan. It's not required to have, and I'd recommend that you experiment with some different builds as well. I am going to be using Bubble Titan, and you'll see why I use that at the very, very end when I'm fighting the boss. Okay, enough talk. Let's show you the actual run. So if you haven't run this on the normal mode first, I'd really recommend that you do that with a group if you can, or if you want to come over to twitch.tv slash manodestra and run it with me. I do tons of PvE helps from Grandmasters, exotic quests, and other things inside of Destiny 2. Anywho, continue jumping around the ship. There's a small little knob on the left-hand side that you can jump onto and platform, and then you can use that to skip a bunch of platforming, which will save you a ton of time if you're doing this on Master. Also, I'm doing this on Master, just in case if I didn't say that before. Once you make it in, you're good to go, and then you're just going to continue running through the path. You can either use your SMG or you can use your fist to punch through these grates. If you want to see the path, just go ahead and slow this video down, but it does go by pretty quick. It's an easy path to follow, and once you memorize it, you don't really have to think about it too much. The path in here is pretty easy once you do it a couple of times. 
Once you go through, there is a door. And if you do have a couple of people that you are running with and you want to help them out and you're good at platforming, you can open the door for them. But since this is solo, I'm going to keep running. Okay, here's the main mechanic. Here is the Egregor Link plant. You're going to shoot that until you get that Egregor Link, which will show up on the left-hand side of your screen. And you will be good to go through any of those weird barriers that are prevalent throughout Presage. In any case, jump up here. I am using strafe jump on my Titan. Don't jump like that. Jump up as high as you can. Again, if you're having any issues platforming, pull out your sword and you'll get the third person perspective, which is going to be very, very helpful. Now, one of the tricks to doing this, if you're doing it on the master level, is knowing what enemies you need to kill and what enemies you don't. A lot of people see those screeb that explode and they're like, I must kill them right away. Truth is, you really don't need to if you can get them all to explode ahead of time, which is what I did. Unfortunately, I had one explode in my face, but it wasn't a big deal because I was high enough light level and also my resilience was at five or more. Once you open that switch, it will open the Egregor Link plant and then you can shoot that and keep moving through that barrier. This area is perfect to show that you don't actually have to kill all the Screebs, just jump over them and keep moving forward shoot this little fuse here and then jump on through the hole and then you're gonna go up to the switch platform up on the top right hand side now if you're good enough and you want to take the chance and you want to try and blow up some screeb you can go a little bit lower with strafe jump see how one or two of them exploded behind me i can do that and kill a couple of them so i don't have to deal with them later Jump across this platform, there will be a switch you'll need to activate, and that will open up the fuse over on the opposite side. Now, this is going to be a great moment for my blinding grenade launcher to kind of show off. If you see here, as soon as the Screeb are blinded, they won't actually be able to see me and chase me and explode. It won't even be a big deal, and I can actually kill them if I'm able to blind them and then hit them when they're stunned in place. After you hit that fuse, come on down to the trash compactor area. There is a cheese for this that I'll explain at the end when I'm on my way through. But for now, what you're doing is you're activating this switch and then you're looking for three fuses. They'll be in different spots every time. I recommend that you look really close to you and then start jumping. As soon as you see them starting to chase you, find and locate those three fuses and just keep moving forward back and forth. See how I'm moving back and forth through these areas. I'm trying to get them to explode themselves before I have to damage them. That way I have enough time to kill the fuses. See how they're blinded and suppressed. I don't even have to go through and kill all of them all. All right, the cheese for that prior room is if you don't get all three fuses, go to the side closest to the entrance and just start jumping up as long as you killed all the Screebs. And the compactors come to try and kill you, you can actually be safe up in that area. Here's the first room that you actually have to kind of pay attention to the enemies. I go through and destroy these two snipers that are up here by the boss. It is a little chancy, but it is really highly recommended to kill them as soon as they spawn because they have ended many flawless solo runs and also stolen some time from me in the past. Instead of using the defensive option of using the bubble, I use the offensive sentinel shield here to clear a bunch of the adds, especially these chieftains that have the void shields. They are very annoying to deal with. And by dealing with the snipers and the chieftains, you don't have anything shooting at you. You just have all of these ravagers coming at you. And they're very easy to deal with because you can just blind them if you want. And then you can take them out at your leisure. This is a good opportunity to punch them if you want. But also know that with any of these ravagers, the critical hit spot is not their head. It is going to be the little flame chain mace that they're using. If you can gather them up into a big group and shoot one or two of them, they will all explode and they will all take care of themselves. And you don't even have to waste any heavy ammo. All right, this is the next big room that we're going to go through. Go ahead and follow the path here. And we're going to talk about this next section. This is where Lament is going to work really, really well because it will be able to take care of a bunch of the multiple different flavor of shields. So we've got some arc shields to deal with, some solar shields, and also some void shields. The void shields, I'm mainly going to be taking care of with my grenade launcher and my grenade and my abilities. But right here, I'm going to start out by stunning this boss right here, as well as his little friends that spawn to the left. Even though he's got an arc shield, if I charge up my Lament, I can rip through his shield 
and kill him before I even have to start with any of the other enemies. Up here, there is going to be a Void Chieftain, and he is easily dealt with with grenades or blinding grenades. You basically want to make sure that he doesn't put up those Void turrets to shield enemies, because if that happens, it's not good. But when they're blinded, they can't do a thing. So, punching here, also good, because it will give you an overshield, which is really nice. And again, using grenade launchers, especially if you're using Truth Teller specifically, is going to be really solid. See how all those guys are stunned down there? That's the little purple effect that's above their head. Very easy to do with a blinding grenade launcher. As much as you possibly can, try to take care of these lurkers before you start. As soon as you kill a certain number of them, a bunch of Ravagers are going to spawn up, as well as the two Abominations that are really the big boss of this area. There's also going to be a couple of Screebs that are going to be coming at you from time to time. But what I do is try to lure them onto this ramp. At that point, I start to actually shoot their little chain maces. As soon as I do that, they'll all destroy themselves. Now, if you need a second, use a blinding grenade launcher and catch your breath. But always be aware of where the abominations are, as well as the different Screebs that spawn at multiple times. Now, if you do this right, the abomination will end up where I started to do damage underneath the platform. Here's a perfect example of passive guard working in real time right there. You can take out that first abomination and spawn the rest of the enemies. Now, I did that relatively quickly. I am then, as soon as the different chieftains start to spawn up, I'm going to use my blinding grenade launcher and my suppression grenades to knock them out. See how he's stunned for a second? He's going to stop shooting at me. Right here is a great opportunity that if you're lucky, you can get an overshield by punching someone, but I didn't get it off right away. It sometimes will take a two punch. Just know that that might happen. I tried to chance it a little bit, tried to get a little edgy, but it didn't quite work. Now, if they do put up those immune void tethers, you can still stun them. They just don't take damage. So blind them first and then knock out their tethers. As soon as you take care of that upper platform, again, do be watching for different screeb that are going to be coming around. The arc shielded chieftain is down below again but again a blinding grenade takes care of him go for the chieftain and then you can take care of the other enemies no other enemies will spawn up as long as you kill that first abomination now right here you have a couple of different options you can either go far left or far right i'm going to engage and try and get this abomination down as quickly as i possibly can I'm basically just going to keep swiping. I've got lots of ammo here. I'm going to finish him. And then all I have to do is deal with the lurkers as well as the solar shielded chieftain if he didn't die earlier. Now, one of the other reasons why I found that doing this in Season of the Lost is a little bit easier than prior seasons is that heavy ammo is a lot more available. It seems like the sword ammo finder or just the ammo finders in general are more generous. So make sure that you pick up any other ammunition you need before you go into the next area. I'm fully stocked on sword ammo, which is really nice. I do wish I had a little bit more grenade launcher ammo, but there's not much I can do at this point. You just want to keep pressing forward. Now here, there's a little bit more of a maze portion. So I'm going to go pretty quickly through it. As soon as you go into this first room, look to your left. There will be a switch. As soon as you see that switch, it will activate the Egregor Lamp plant, and then you can move through off to the right-hand side. Go fairly quickly through this so that you can make it all the way through the barrier. At this point, there's going to be a bunch of Screebs that are going to spawn up here. This is another perfect opportunity that you can use the Titan special ability to blind them. If you put up a barrier, they will actually have to walk through it, and they'll be suppressed for about two seconds. I'll use that to kind of trap all of them together, Throw a suppressor grenade and you're good. Now, if you're on controller, you really have to tap that fuse there. I'm using mouse and keyboard so I can be a little bit more precise, but that is a little tricky to do on controller. So just know that shooting that fuse, a little tricky. As soon as you hit that switch and hit that plant, go up through the barrier that is off around this corner. And then you're going to head into a room with a couple more void chieftains. Now, you have a couple of choices here. I'm going to show you kind of a mix of both strategies. If you feel really comfortable with dealing with these enemies without using your offensive sentinel titan you can certainly just use your grenade launcher and do that i'm going to kind of show using blinding grenade launchers for a little bit and then i'm going to pop my super just to kind of show that you can kind of do both things i've cleared it once with my super i've cleared it once just using grenade launcher it's your choice now the nice thing about using your super is that you can deal with these chieftains who are up on upper platform in a higher tactical position a lot faster and then right here 
just use a grenade or a grenade launcher to knock out those two lurkers and you're gonna be good to go down here there is going to be a scorpius turret an easy way to deal with it hit him with a stun grenade for some reason it gets suppressed with blinding grenades even though it's a machine i don't know why it's just space magic i don't get it but i'm gonna move on anyway shoot the plant here and then you're going to head through the barrier down below now this is another example of knowing your path if you follow the path that you see on screen you don't have to go fight any extra screeps as soon as you see the canisters go to the grate through the right and then hit the egregor plant and then turn back around then just take hard lefts around jump over the screeb and jump through you'll have plenty of time to get through there so you don't have to reactivate the plant if you are having issues with the pathing just rewind the video and slow down the speed and you can see the path that i take it's very easy as soon as you go through that egregor link barrier here is an area where if you still had your super you could pop it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to stay on this left hand side by doing that i will make all the enemies kind of come to me I'll continue to use my blinding grenade launcher to knock out any of the abominations and any of the lurkers again passive guard works really well here see there the screeb almost knocked me out as soon as i killed those two abominations i didn't have any issues it was a little bit risky you don't necessarily need to do that but i would recommend if you're trying to speed run it or go faster through it that's an easy way to deal with them as soon as you hit that fuse and that switch respectively you can go back and hit this egregor link plant right here as soon as you go through the barrier, you're going to have an area where you can do a little bit of platforming. Now, I'm going to show a slower strat here, but if you're really solid and you want to hit that Egregor Lint plant before and you're really good at getting the fuse really quickly, you can actually skip a little bit of this, but I'm going to go the slower path. I'm going to take care of that Corrupted Raider here, and as soon as I knock him down, come over here and I'm going to look to my right. There will be a fuse down below. As soon as I do that, I'll jump back and go hit the Egregor link again so I can go through the barrier. Another cool little trick is if you need a little extra distance, if you're using Lament, you can charge it up for just a second. It will give you just a tiny little bit more distance. You can go back and hit that Egregor link plant, and then you can go through the barrier here. If you're fast enough, that's the area where you can actually skip a little bit. Just hit that Egregor link plant before you go in and shoot that first fuse and you can actually go right up to it that is all based on your comfort level with the platforming i did it the slow way because i want to make sure that everyone understands how they can do it and take their time they don't have to rush through it is boss room time the blinding grenade launcher is going to work really well in here and all of the chieftains in this upper area are going to be solar shielded which is going to work really really nicely with our lament as soon as you damage the boss to about 10% of his life, he'll disappear downstairs into the solar fuse room, and then you'll get all of the different enemies to spawn up. Right here is a perfect example of where you want to use your blinding grenade launchers as much as possible, and if you need to, get an overshield if they run at you. Now here's why we're using a blinding grenade launcher. One well-placed grenade is going to turn these normally very aggressive offensive enemies into jump change that you can clean up very easily by using your primary weapon as soon as you knock out a shield if you're feeling like you're running out of ammo you can back up and start to use your grenade launcher but i really really recommend that you take care of these chieftains as soon as you can because they don't seem to get stunned as long as the other enemies they will recharge a little bit faster and start shooting you if at any time you are in danger of dying to any kind of attack, just block with your Lament. It won't take as much ammunition as a normal sword as well. As soon as you kill the main mob of enemies, a couple more of the Scorn enemies will appear by the switches in the room. There's two on the opposite side of each other. When you activate them, it activates the coolant flush, which will allow you to go safely into the boss room down below. Now there's one area here where you can take solar damage. I'd recommend that you get that switch last because if you don't get it last, the solar effect will not go away like it did there and you can almost die. So always get that one last. At this point, I'm going to go to this side of the room because there's a pipe you can sit on that I'll show you a little bit later. But here, my only job is to get the boss down to about one third of life. For some reason, he will stand there. I'm going to try and lure him over to this bubble area. 
In addition, there are going to be two Arc Chieftains that are really annoying and will ruin your runs if you don't deal with them. So right here, I'm going to take a second and deal with them as soon as I possibly can. By doing that within the bubble, I stand very little chance of taking damage. Now, you want to keep the bubble relatively close to the exit and the entrance, and here's why. Right here, I'm going to take a second, get my life back. I can block using the Lament Sword as well, and it will take away all the solar damage before I die. Now, for the rest of the upper part of this encounter where I'm in the upper room, I recommend that you stay on this side of the room to clear those enemies first. Not only will you be able to clear those enemies, but more importantly, because of the way the character perspective works, if you look to the right-hand side, if you keep the enemies to your right, you will actually not be able to be seen by them as well. This is a great PvP tip as well. Most of those enemies could not get a shot on me because of the way my perspective sits. Now, by doing that, you can get off an easy grenade launcher shot. You can take care of the first two chieftains. And then this last group of adds are not an issue at all. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat. As soon as you deal with all of the different raiders in the first spawn, here come the next spawn, the next wave of adds. Now, here's what we have to do on the second part of the boss fight. Since I don't have my bubble, I have to be a little bit more careful about how I engage with the boss downstairs. I need to make sure that I know where my exits are, and if I need to run away from a fight, I'm going to do it. That is A-OK. -okay. I'd rather do that. In addition, if there's any other heavy ammo upstairs and you don't need it, don't pick it up, especially if you've got Sword Scavenger. I'm going to wait to pick that one up first. As always, I'm going to get this third coolant flush switch off, and again, I'm going to go back over to this side, specifically because of the pipe that exists right there i'm gonna hop up back and forth and there's this area right here you can just take care of all the ravagers all of the little knights and stuff like that all of the arc chieftains that i didn't kill before by blinding them i can deal with them first and that is what i'm going to do the reason i'm going to do that is that those enemies will keep you frozen in place and it will make it very very difficult to fight the boss especially without a bubble as soon as i do that i'm going to run over to this side and just reset Take a moment, and then I'll be able to do lots of damage to the boss. Once he gets to about 50%, more adds will spawn up, but now you don't have those Arc Chieftains to deal with. I'm going to come up here, and dealing with these enemies is going to be your choice. I'm going to take a second because I want to make sure I get an overshield before I go downstairs. I prime them, and now you can see a lot of the enemies have respawned to this side. I'm not going to push in to get those Arc Chieftains, but instead jump up. Here's a perfect example of Lament saving me. I didn't really waste a ton of ammunition. By doing that, I can blind those Stalkers with my grenade, and then my Blinding Grenade Launcher, take care of the first Chieftains, and then I'm mostly safe for this first part of the encounter. There will be some of the enemies that will chase you at this point, so just be careful. As before, you take care of the Chieftains by priming them with a Blinding Grenade Launcher, and that's really all there is to it. A blinding grenade launcher with Lament makes this boss fight a lot easier. And the truth is, is that blinding grenade launchers aren't that hard to come by. Just farm a couple of truth tellers, or if you need to, farm an ignition code from the season of the splicer engrams and focus those on up. Now, do be careful because at this point, again, like I said, some of the enemies might be more aggressive and they might actually start chasing you. If that happens, just take a second and knock them out with a blinding grenade launcher. At this part of the boss fight, there will be some more Ravagers that will spawn in addition to the main mob. So you just need to take care of them. See how they are chasing me right now. Those aren't usually here with the main mob of enemies. Take them out and then the Stalkers will spawn up here by the switches for the final phase. Now, we want to do as much damage to the boss as possible in the third and final phase. There will be more enemies that will spawn up as well as Screebs in the third part of the fight. So just be really careful. We're going to try and kill the boss to make sure that he doesn't kill us and that we don't have to deal with the Screebs or any of the other enemies upstairs anymore. Don't go in if the enemy throws a grenade at the ground because that will make you take more damage and that could easily wipe out your run. Now, again, I'm going to approach this side. The boss should be to the opposite side at this moment. Yep, he's still over there, and we're going to try and lure him over to this side. Here's a couple of blinding grenade launchers for those chieftains who are very annoying, and when you need to, just hop up here. As soon as they're blinded a couple of times, and I know the boss is relatively close, 
I'm going to pop my bubble right here. And then the boss is in a perfect spot for me to just bake him. Nothing is really going to kill you here when you're in the bubble. If you need to get another overshield, just back up for a second. Don't push forward, back up, and you can reapply an overshield. If you need to, you can also block in the shield, and that will make it so those enemies don't actually hurt you at all. All right, so that's the run. Be careful on your way up because any enemies that remain will actually kill you and knock you out. So don't waste a flawless run by jumping up and not thinking about those enemies first. So jump through all the different grates. And if you haven't gotten your dead man's tail yet, you'll go ahead and pick it up over here on this spot. If you have not done it flawless, you will get an emblem. You don't necessarily need to do it solo flawless to get that emblem, but I know there's a lot of solo destiny players out there. If you did like the video and you learned something from it, let me know down in the comment section what you enjoyed and what you liked. Also, if you thought this was a solid guide, make sure that you slap the like button. It helps share this video with other people as well as subscribe and turn on notifications for lots more Destiny 2 solo content and other things as well. Like I said, I stream on Twitch most days, twitch.tv slash manodestra. If you're needing any other help or if you just want to get a run with me or join our great community in our Discord, the link for that is down in the description box below. Stay tuned to more solo content as well as Grandmaster Guides here on the YouTube channel. And if you do want to see another video, it will be waiting for you here at the end. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.